to reach today's teens, you've got to understand that their culture, they've got their own unique culture. It's radically different than ours. There's a, an inability on our part to be able to understand why. What motivates kids to be doing these things, thinking these things, and, and, and going through life the way they are. So we've got to study that culture. It's contemporary youth culture. We got the property here. We started to refurbish it, remodel it. And then I started hanging out on the porch after school, September of 98. And as kids would walk by, ask them in. And obviously I was, you know, you can imagine what that was like. Well, who the heck are you? And the guy your age, why do you want me in there? And there was a lot of, it was tough for, for a couple months. Whatever food may happen to be around, we get it all, all given. And we figure we've had, as far as assistance goes, we've had um, literally over 500 people contribute over 6,000 hours of labor to this thing since it started. That's in the past three years. And um, that includes all the cooks that cook daily and, and that type of thing. Now we're going to go into the, what we tend to use primarily is the dining room or, or the main room to, for them to hang out. Um, one of the things you'll notice with seeing the handprints and names all over everything, we try to let this be their place. It's important that they feel this is their place. And when a new kid comes, we try to get their hand up there as quickly as possible, get their name, get their birthday. And... Uh, Get them involved. I think you need to be aware of the type of kids that come in. Um, they're kids that make mistakes. They're street kids. They're kids that need constant supervision, constant support, um, unconditional acceptance. They're going to make mistakes, without a doubt. They're going to screw up royally, but you just have to accept that, that that's who they are at that point in time and forgive them and move on, and hopefully they'll grow and learn from it. So. You've got to have people who will be Jesus. When I study Christ and look at him, you know, scripturally, he was non-judgmental with those in the worst situations. Okay? So there's got to be up front, there's got to be, an, there's got to be a willingness to accept a kid and come in regardless of where he's been, what he's been doing. There's got to be a high tolerance level to, and there's got to be a balance. Obviously, we've got to have discipline, we've got to be able to have control, but there's got to be a, a willingness and acceptance, a high acceptance level, a high tolerance level to be, to be able to get to know the kid. Then I think, honestly, there's got to be some professional training and background to deal with what you uncover. Um, we have a tough time when just volunteers come in and... and I think I've developed trust with them. It tends them to be shocking. And, uh, I'm a pretty good role model. I role model with them a lot, and I don't, I don't preach to them, I don't lecture to them. I just role model so that they can see how I live my life, how I make my decisions, so that they can copy me and learn how to deal with life struggles without doing some of the things that they used to do, whether it's fighting, um, some, a lot of them use drugs, alcohol. Some have eating disorders, mental health issues, so they learn that they can come to me with it all, and then rather than lecture to them, I put my arm around them and say, hey, there's other ways to, to deal with life struggles, and we go from there. And they continue to come to me, and that relationship continues to grow, so um, once the trust is established, you can help them a lot more. Once, you, once they know that you're there for them, they'll come to you with just about anything. It's very, very rewarding, very trying. What's your background I have a bachelor's degree from Penn State in um, human development and psychology. I double majored. I went for my master's degree and quit when I got married. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I started when I was 16 as a volunteer for Big Brother Big Sister and I've just never stopped. Um, so my life history has brought me here too, my background. I've had some problems in my childhood too so I know what it's like to walk in some of their shoes. So. I feel it's my way of giving back. A, they've got to have this ability to understand the culture. B, they've got to have experience operating within it, or at least be under the administration of someone who has. We would, we would not, someone walking into this cold would have a very difficult time, I really think. And so we've, we've looked for, we've had about uh, four, nine or ten interns here over the past couple of years. 
And um, that's been tough, even when we've had college kids who supposedly have education and training background and experience. That it's still it's still a radically different world than. Well, even if I came in here and said, I'm a Christian, I believe this, this, and this, half these kids would have come in, they'd turn and walk away. So when I role model that to them, I, I bet half the kids sitting in this room go to church with me. And not because I asked them to, just because that relationship's there, that door's been open, and then I can ask them. But it's taken me months to be able to get these kids there. And some of them come just, like Joe, he does all the music at the church now. He's so talented. So, I mean, I... I come in here and I don't no, lecture that to them, I don't preach it to them, I don't quote them the Bible, I don't do any of that. Because if they did, uh, most of the kids that came in here would turn around and walk out. But at the same time, a lot of them end up coming to church with you. Yeah. Yeah. Not it doing grows it. on them. It grows on They see how I live my life, they see that I genuinely love and care for them because that's just what's in me to do. And then the door opens and they can fall. Yeah, I recommend it to my friends all the time. They. Some of them come and some of them don't, but it's their loss if they don't come because it's really, really fun. Well, what do they think about you coming here? Well, they think it's just an act after school activity. It's just a place to come and have fun. Uh, Hang out with my friends and meet them here and then we do whatever from here. Okay, what, what are some of the best uh, experiences you had, uh, you know, from coming here, would you say? Uh, it gave me the opportunity to get a camp impact, which is summer camp, and plus it's just helped me like build better relationships with people. Yeah, I'm usually here between three and like sometimes seven. It all depends on if I practice or not. I think we can legitimately say and validate we've taken kids that that probably two or three years ago were destined for for they were they were living. A, a terrible, they had a terrible existence. Through these relationships, we've been able to get them um, clear up their thinking, get them better off in school. We literally go into school and, and hang out with the, the teachers there. We've got one, one boy in particular that uh, last year's mom on his 18th birthday said, you're out. We've been able to get him into a home. We got him back into school. We've got him um, on an early acceptance program in the military. So we've seen this kid literally do a 180 degree turn. Yeah, you don't have to like go to church necessarily to come here, or you can go to church, like different churches. It doesn't really matter which church you go to. There's a heart element that is so valuable, and I find is so missing. There's a, there's a, a lot of people with head knowledge, okay? But there's this heart part of this thing that's got to be there. And that's, that, that's what determines if somebody, someone or some entity, some people are going to be able to make it or not. And I, if, it's a, if it's in a religious context, a spiritual context, I think they've got, to, I said it earlier, they've got to be in prayer. I actually, I'm able to control my temper and I mean, she gives me a lot of advice on how to communicate with people instead of doing other things that I shouldn't be doing. Through Frontline initially, we, we had an approach, sort of more like a business-like approach. We said, well, you know, we'll find the formula, we'll write the book, there, we can make the cookie cutter that will work in any community or any church. Now I would say I think there are basic similarities from community to community or church to church because of the consistencies in youth culture, but they are going to vary because of um, geographical location. Like I've been better like towards other people and stuff. That that's what Kid Committee helped me out too with. What's Kid Committee? Uh, it's um, it's a, it, it's a like organization for a bunch of kids. We plan activities and stuff for the kids here, and we uh like do fundraisers and like we're supposed to help out the kids if they need help with anything, keep things under control and stuff like that. Got it. What we did here, we did a survey of all the kids in both the middle and the high school and asked them if they could have anything they wanted in Bellwood, what would they want? Uh, we had a category up near the top that I called the silent screams, where kids little, literally wrote, what do you want or what do you need help with? I need someone to talk to. I need a place to go after school. I need help. And that varied from help with homework to help with surviving. It was very, um, very moving to read those things. 